Oh, Hoovians, are you excited? This Halloween sees the return of this. Listen carefully, we don't have much time. The flux is coming. It's bringing with it the Sontarans, weeping angels, creatures known as the Ravagers, and enemies from across the universe. This is the fight of our lives. Doctor, we need you! I can't hold him much longer, Doctor! It's coming. Are you ready? Oh yes, series 13 of the new Doctor Who is back with a bang this Sunday with Doctor Who Flux launching on BBC One at 6.25. It's Jodie Whittaker's last series as the Doctor, Jodie, Mandip Gill, John Bishop and Jacob Anderson star in an epic six-part adventure which will take the Doctor and her friends to the edge of the universe and beyond in a battle for survival. And I'm thrilled to say that Mandip Gill, who plays Yaz, joins me now. Good afternoon, Mandip. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good as well. Where in the world are you? I'm actually in London for a little while. Fantastic. You must be so excited. Tell me, on the scale of one to ten, how excited are you about the series airing on Sunday? Uh, ten? No, <laughs> I, do you know why I'm really excited? Because it was so long ago that we filmed this series that, and there's loads of parts of the episode that you're not in. There's loads of special effects that go thereafter and loads of, you know, like grading and all that stuff. Mm. So when you film it, it's something completely different to what you see. So when I watch it on Sunday, I essentially watch it with everyone else watching it. Like, I don't know what it looks like. Ah, yes, you haven't seen the finished product yet. Don't see the finished product. Don't see the bits that I'm not in. Don't see how everything ties together. How big some of the monsters are not, and aliens are not even there when we're filming. Yeah. So it's sort of, for me, it's really exciting to see. I make people watch it on Sunday. OK. <laughs> and how does this series of The Doctor, which is titled Doctor Who Flux, differ from the other series we've seen in the past? So this this series is one epic series. Um, it's with six chapters in. Mm. Originally, we were doing episodics. So we'd have one storyline, we'd finish and tie it up at the end of that episode. Whereas this series, it's one long running storyline. There's lots of through arcs, there's lots of emotions, unanswered questions, all that kind of thing that run throughout the six episodes. Mm, Okay, so a huge question for you, Mandip. Can you tease us about what the flux actually is? (laughs) <laughs> can I, though, do I want to make people tune in because it runs throughout the episode I don't want to ruin anything but it's terrifying the episode that we see on Sunday is actually an episode in which we see lots of terrifying like forces stirring up so that sort of sets a precedent for the rest of the episode okay there's lots of questions that have been asked in previous series and in this series and we start to get answers to some of them stuff. Okay, that's brilliant. And what kind of bad guys can we expect? Well, we've got lots of like the returning classics like Cybermen, Ood, Sontarans. They're all baddies. We've got a new baddie like who we at Carvinista, which is essentially a six foot, really scary dog. Yeah. Um, so we've got but like everyone loves like the Cybermen they are scary they have been around for a long long time Um, we fought them in previous series but obviously we didn't do a good enough job because they're back again and thinking back to the time you were in Cardiff filming this series it was quite a while ago as you mentioned how was your time how's your time been in Cardiff oh I love Cardiff I ask anyone I absolutely love Cardiff I would stay there all week like on the weekends when we weren't filming you know other people might return to London I'd go back in a heartbeat. I think it's probably the best place place I've ever lived. I loved going to work. I loved the crew. I loved Cardiff. I loved my lifestyle there. Sort of, you know, I'd say an addiction to Cardiff. Oh, (laughs) well, we love having you here and hopefully you'll be back again soon. Oh, my God. How was it? The universe is listening. And, you know, you filmed probably in lockdown as well. How was that logistically for you? Yeah, so... I was so grateful to be going back to work. We didn't start when we were supposed to start because of COVID. We went back a couple of months later than planned. But we had all the protocols in place, people wearing masks. We had bubbles. We were quite, me and Jodie, were quite um, interested to see how the series were going to be because we thought a big part of our journey 
at Doctor Who and in Cardiff is the, the social aspect and the crew and talking to them and mm. having an amazing time creating this amazing show. And we were quite worried how that would work with having bubbles and stuff, but everyone just stuck to the protocols, sort of, if anything, just really kept their distance. Yeah. But it was, we were so lucky to be working. And what I think happened as well, because we had to stay in Cardiff, whereas usually we'd fly out to South Africa, Tenerife, Bulgaria for the previous series is, Everything just went that bit bigger. Mm. So the set designs had to be bigger. A lot of things were created and made from scratch in Cardiff, inside massive hangars in Cardiff. The costumes, the prosthetics, the storylines, the acting, we just amped everything up that little bit more. But in terms of actually filming and realising, you know, it was during a pandemic, it was no different really apart from everyone had masks on, were protecting each other. But I think we all just were so very aware that we were lucky to be filming in that That's time. Thing. yeah. And all we were thinking about is, please, please, please get to the end of filming without COVID stopping the production, which we did. We filmed <sighs> for a year and COVID, we didn't stop for COVID. Oh, we're over and the that, moon. Oh, I think that's testimony to, testament to everyone that's filming there because they're such a big family that you come into. These guys have been working on Dot Two since it, it, you know, since it restarted. People are family. They they like best friends there. So I think everyone were trying to protect everyone, and it really does show because we've got to the end of the series. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing, Amanda. But and tell me about the new companion. What is it like working with John Bishop, and <laughs> what was his character like? Um, so John John plays a character called Dan Lewis who's like an everyday man from Liverpool which is amazing because it meant that we got to go actually film in Liverpool mm. um, for his storyline and stuff I've loved working with John like I've loved it's been really intense like getting to know each other a lot of the times we're just me and John in scenes but it's been really nice getting to know John on a personal level but also John as an actor, like he'd say it himself, like he hasn't been on many sets before. So he's so, he asks questions, there's no ego. He wants to know how things work. He's asking us about like what certain buttons do in the TARDIS, mm -hmm. what happens when X, Y and Z is pressed or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like he's so, he's so eager to learn. And it would, it, I don't know, it just felt so lovely that he'd come into our family and he, he did, there were no ego. He wasn't thinking, oh, I've seen Doctor Who before. I know how this works. I've been working in this industry for years. He was like a giant child. Good. Like he really threw himself into it. We're really Love into that. it. Like, it's been so nice to get to know John in such circumstances because... He were part of our bubble, so it was quite intense. You know, we had to st we stayed together on set a lot. But he's really enjoyed himself, and I love actors who come in and love doing this because this is what I do yeah. every day for the last on and off for four years. And I guess he would have been quite nervous about it as well. Well, if he was, he didn't show he it. He was hiding it really <laughs> well. Okay, uh, stay where you are, Mandip. We'll be back with you after this. King to time travelling companion Mandip Gill, who plays Yaz in the current series of Doctor Who, which is back on our screens this Sunday. Okay, let's go back a few years now. How did you get into acting and where did your passion for acting come from? Um, you know what? I've been asked this question a lot and I think I only started to really think about, like, genuinely, because I always, my answer was, oh, I've always liked performing, da da da. So, you know, it, it genuinely happened very naturally. So, mm. but I think deep down, if I really think about it, my dad really encouraged me and my siblings to, like, we're always in front of the camera, yeah. taking pictures, being videoed. We'd have our own little discos at home. I'd put on, like, mini little performances for my siblings who did definitely didn't want to watch. Yeah. I'd get paid, like, 50p to do, you know, sing Hindi songs. Love your and dad. So I think if I really think about it, it obviously came from that because if yeah. you didn't have that encouragement, I, I don't really know why I would do it. Like, I didn't really know you could do it as a job because yeah. where we were brought up, you know, there weren't drama clubs and all that stuff. We weren't really allowed to play out. We lived on a council estate. You know, I wasn't allowed to play with other people. I played with my siblings. But yeah. I used to, we used to watch a lot of TV and a lot of soaps. Yeah. And so I think with that sort of him encouraging me to do this thing and stand up and perform, and then I'm watching a lot of TV, a lot of soaps, and starting to see people like Mira Sayal and Goodness Gracious Me and seeing people like Pam and Nagra and Ben like Beckham thinking, oh, yeah. we look like each other, but how is she doing that? It happened really naturally and no, yeah. no one at home was able to help me progress. So I actually had to use people at school. So I used to do drama when I was in high school and yeah. the teachers, the drama teachers there helped me go to college and do it and when I got to college I'd done a BTEC in acting 
and they helped me get to university. And when I got to university, they helped me get an agent. So it was actually the people in education that were really able to help me further this because I spoke to my sister before and she was like, you wouldn't know what to do. If mm. No one's ever done it before. You don't know that you can send them to drama school or something like that. You just think they're like, they must have seen, pla- they must have seen um, talent in you to encourage it and nurture it for you to go on to do so well as well. well yeah, like, you know, I, I, they must have done because I actually was at two um, high schools and both high schools really helped me. Mm. I guess I'd taken a, a massive interest in drama and d- did the plays at both high schools. But yeah, I guess they saw something in order to help me. But had it have not been for those people in school, those teachers... I actually don't know how I would have done it because I'd never seen anyone around me doing it. Respect to your dad and respect to your teachers as well because now you're in this huge part. I mean, how do you feel about, you know, being part of such a huge programme? Just, it's my, it's, it's, I'm speechless. It makes me speechless. Like, I... I was in the building um, in 2017 where Doctor Who's filmed, filming casually. And then, and they said, oh, that's the door for Doctor Who. We can't use that door. And I just looked at it and thought, I'll never be part of that. And I don't know why, maybe because I hadn't seen someone like me. A lot of the times I hadn't seen people with my accent either. Yeah. And so I just thought, wow, like they're creating such an amazing show behind that door. That's it's so exclusive and and like on this massive scale. I knew what Doctor Who was. Mm. And I really did think about this door. And then cut to seven, eight months later, I've got this job. So I think I I just find it all so overwhelming, but also it's really hard to understand what you're in when you're doing it. True. Yeah. Like I think it'll take me a couple of months after. And also when I'm looking around my flat, I have memorabilia. I have things that people, like the other day we got the most amazing gift off set. It's like a piece of the TARDIS. And when I finally put it up, it just, it'll be all those beautiful things, fan art that you look at that you think, yeah, this was something massive. This was so much bigger than us. Like, it were there for years before we got there. It were there for that years after. But actually, no one can take this away from me. Absolutely. And I'd love to see your flat with all this stuff around as well. Goodness <laughs> me. I bet you've got some really wonderful things. You, you, did you it's mention just- you get things from fans as well? Yeah, I get, yeah, I get lots of things sent from fans. But also, I, I love keeping it. If, some, if someone's made something... And it's no harm to me to keep it. And also, years to come, I want to look back and show people. Aww. I've got all the Doctor Who magazines. I've got so many comics of us made into little characters. I just, I think it's, I think it's brilliant. I've well, got so many like boxes of, you know, the figures that came out of our characters. Yeah, I've just got them stacked up for like if anyone. I've given loads away, but. I just love them. <laughs> well, I hope you've got the cutout of the Radio Times with the wonderful words that Jody has said about working with you. I have I to read it to you. She Please says, do. I think I'm really lucky because with Mandip, if you're ever going to be side by side with someone throughout the entire journey, being on a set every day with Mandip has been amazing because she's one of the funniest people I've ever met. She's oh. just a rock, but a, a really funny rock. Yeah. How lovely is that? It's been brilliant. I mean, do you know what? I think most times they're not, she's probably laughing at me. She's had a really good time <laughs> laughing at me and I've, I've been able to take it. I think she's honestly developed like so many like strong characteristics within me. But she, I, I'd say exactly the same thing without copying it. I couldn't think of anyone better yeah. to do four years with. It's been so intense. We've gone around the world. Like we've done so many different storylines. We meet so many actors like day in, day out. We have so many amazing guest leads. It's it's quite overwhelming, but it isn't when you're doing it with someone like Jodie. Like, it, I'll say the same thing. She's so stable. She's so funny. Like, I stand there sometimes and think, how does she think of that so fast? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it must have been quite emotional for you because we know it. this is her last series. I mean, what was it like the last day filming with her? There, there were a lot of tears. I knew it was coming. It had always been common knowledge to me. But you don't even think about when you're doing the last series because you're essentially just doing the episode that's in front of you, yeah. enjoying it. So I think the last day was really emotional. There was a lot of tears. Tears for us as actors, tears for the character. But it was so beautiful. We've had like little stills sent. Chris Chibnall, um, the exec producer on the show, had sent me a picture the other day and I was just like, I can't wait for people to see it. We cannot wait to see it either. But what about you? I mean, after, you know, Jodie Whittaker is leaving at the end of this series, will we have you returning to Cardiff? Oh, who knows? You know how much I love Cardiff. But, you know, I don't. I wouldn't want to spoil it for anyone. That okay. is a long time since that is revealed. Also, I know people will ask that question all the time, but I do wonder, do you actually want to know? 
the audience because I I'm I'm excited True. about who the, the next doctor would be, who who the other companions would be. So for me, it's exciting. I'm in it. I can only imagine that it's really exciting for people to actually not know the answer to that. Oh, who do you think should be the next doctor before I let I, you go? I am not getting into this conversation because if I <laughs> mention something, and even if somehow randomly it turns out to be that person, they're going to think I knew. But I have no, I have no inkling whatsoever. But also, I love enjoying what people, other people think. Yeah, like who they think it should be and why because the fans of Doctor Who are amazing they have rewrite some of the storylines they write new storylines they have so many thoughts about this show that I absolutely love when if they think someone should be the Doctor it's not just because they like that person or they like that actor a lot of genuine thought has gone think. into it yeah 100% yeah. so I won't say who I think although Whoopi Goldberg would be good oh she would be amazing that's a good one <laughs> <laughs> I do know. I think she's. I think she's talked about it. That's why. And then I thought, oh yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> it's, it's been so, been so delightful chatting to you today, Mandib. Thank you so much for coming on to BBC Thank Radio you. Wales. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. And you can catch Doctor Who Flux on BBC One and BBC iPlayer at six twenty-five on Sunday, which is the thirty-first of October.